What we want to do today, we want to do a nice deck showcase. Uh, a bunch of people in the Discord helped me with this, so thanks again to everyone in the Discord that participated. We have a lot of new cards this format. Uh, Snake Eyes in particular really shook up the meta. So what I want to do, as per usual now for these new sets, is we're going to be checking out a bunch of replays and a bunch of potential deck lists for all the new stuff. So, you know, if I can't get a deck profile made for like a deck that includes revolution synchron or uh infernal rage well at least you'll have that resource also like infernobles you know you might see a replay from someone that knows the deck a lot better than me so that's why i really like making these and i think they're a pretty good idea the way we're gonna do it as per usual we're gonna go uh, deck by deck and after every deck list we're gonna show a replay or two for each deck so i think for starters we might as well start with really like the best new deck in the game and I think that's just the pure snake eyes. So here we have a list from Pitasovs. This is a deck that has a lot of valid builds. I've seen a lot of different builds. Insane grind game, kind of like Despia in that sense of just having a crazy grind game and just building a bunch of advantage every turn. I think the deck strength is when used as an engine slash extender. It's bad going second as pure. I completely disagree. I don't think this deck is bad at going second. I've won multiple games going second. It's actually surprisingly good at going second. I mean, in this format, the thing is most decks are bad going second. Like pretty much every deck in the game right now is because turn one boards are really, really oppressive at the current moment in the game. Poplar single-handedly carrying. Yeah, definitely. If we didn't have Poplar, this deck would be a lot worse. But just the fact that you can normal Ash search poplar poplar special from hand poplar search your sinful spoils or if you already have access to diabelle star you can just go search the field spell or even some removal in the form of the spoils of subversion there's just so much good to say about this deck right um all right so let's go check out we have a pid replay we have actually two snake eyes replays to look at we have one from pit to sauce and we also have a really good one from yoshimitsu so we're going to look at both of them yo unnicknamed thanks for the raid for the first replay, we're doing Pit to Saw's replay, and then we'll move on to another replay of Snake Eyes. Uh, that was just really cool, so I had to show it off from Yoshimitsui. So anyway, here, this is actually a really well done combo from Pit to Saw's. So he starts in draw phase with Wanted to play around Droll, normal summoning the Snake Ash, going for the Poplar. This is like as standard as it gets, and it's going to be a really good showcase of like a true full combo for this deck. So Poplar, search the Dramatic Snake Eyes, since you already have access to the um, Sinful it's just called snake eye right yeah so you already have access to snake eye with diabelle star so we go for the snake eye here to summon jet synchron out of the deck then we're going to link one into link rebo using the poplar then we get our poplar effect in the grave to put him back in the back row go snake ash send both himself and the poplar to the grave to summon oak oak bring back poplar then we go oak effect send himself and poplar to the grave to summon flambeurs that way we have three level one fires in the grave set up so that we can link away the Flamberge and the Jet Synchron in order to trigger Flamberge, summon back the Jet Synchron, summon back the Poplar using these two, go into a Formula Synchron to get a draw. After this, we can go for the Jet Synchron effect to discard the talents from our hand, since it seems our opponent has like nothing. And we go into the Promethean Princess Bestower of Flames. Bestower is gonna bring back the Flamberge, and then from here, we're going to go Flamberge Effect, put the IP Mascarina in the back row, and we go into Amphibious Swarm Ship and Blow Whale. Activate the Wand to draw in the graveyard, draw one card, we get our Ash, we set the Snake Eye. Now, I'm a bit confused, I feel like he could have actually extended a little bit more earlier if he just summoned Oak from Grave instead of, because he summoned Jet Synchron and Poplar. And I think he could have just summoned the uh, the the Oak and Jet Synchron, and then Oak could have brought back the Poplar. Unless he already used Oak effect earlier, and I just didn't notice. Now, with that being said, this is a, oh yo Cali with a rate of 90, huge raid from the Cali effect. W Cali in the chat and in the comments for people over on the YouTube side. Appreciate you, man. Really appreciate it. This is like as good as it gets, pretty much. I feel for a board. This is the end board for Snake Eyes. I think so. The reason for that. Not only do they have the Promethean Bestowers set up in the grave with the Amblo Whale, but on opponent's turn, you get to bring back the IP Mask Arena using the Flamberge, so you have access to like an Appaloosa if you need it. Plus, you can go Flamberge plus your Formula Synchron into a Baron de Fleur, and you have Droll, Maxi, Ash in hand. Like, you can't be in much better of a situation, seriously. It doesn't look that crazy on turn one, but then when you go into the next turn, you kind of see how crazy it is when it like all unfolds. So our opponent is going to go Baldrake here. Baldrake target, I think, Link Karibo. It's whatever. We go Dramatic Snake Eye Chase to get our Diabell Star in the... Uh, not in the graveyard. I mean in the back row from the graveyard. Just to negate the Beast Chill. 
Then we're going to get ourselves an IP Mascarena on the field. Afterwards, as soon as they do anything here, they go for Bestial Lubellion. We're going to go for our Formula Synchron effect and get into our Baron de Fleur. Yeah, thanks, Starlet Dragon. Yeah, no, this is this is a good combo, man. I'm not going to lie, dude. Like, like, now you have IP, you have Baron. Yeah, they have their Bestials and shit, but, like, look at our hand, too. Like... So we go Flamberge when it's sent to the grave. We get to summon a bunch of stuff. That's another thing too. Flamberge being sent to grave will summon two monsters. And then IP has a bunch of stuff to play with, right? So Flamberge summon two fires from the grave. And now IP can make Appaloosa whenever she wants. So if we need to negate monsters, we have no issue doing that. You get the Oak effect to add, add back the Jet Synchron to hand. We get to pop these two using the Bestower of Flames. We get the IP Mascarena effect. Now you can start, start to see what we're actually doing here, right? It's a lot crazier than it looked on turn one, dude. It's insane. You get out the Appaloosa. Now you have a bunch of monster negates. You still have your Omni negate on your Baron. You get your Promethean Princess back. If they pop a Link monster, you get the effect of Amblo Whale in the grave. You get back your Jet Synchron. You get to search a spell. You have Ash Maxi Droll still in hand. Like, it, it, it can't get much better than that for this deck, right? It's amazing. It's insane. All right, so here they go for Bestial Baldrake. Uh, okay. Oh, no, not Bestial Baldrake. Sorry, they go Brendan High Spirit, discard the Baldrake to get the Cartesia. Then they go Nadir Servant. We're going to Ash the Nadir Servant. I think that makes a lot of sense because Nadir Servant, you know, they would have just sent, like, the uh, Entis to the Grave and forced to negate anyway. And then they're going to go for Fallen of Albaz. Obviously, we'll just Appaloosa the Albaz and call it a day here, right? Easy money. Just call it a day. Could have made the Four Material Appaloosa with the Amblo Elbow. Yeah, I guess I guess so. That's true. Doesn't really change much, though. All right. So Appaloosa negate the Cartesia Special Summon. And there we go. Easy money. I mean, like, that's a really, really, really good combo. For for the deck, I think that's, like, a perfect setup, pretty much. And now we're going to go look at the Yoshimitsu one, because that one is just, like, really funny. So I just had to showcase it. So we go for the Field Spell. Field Spell set up Flamberge. We go for Snake Ash, Ash, add Poplar, Poplar, Trigger, Enhance, Special Poplar, Poplar, Search the Sinful Spoils. Then we go Sinful Spoils, Snake Eye to send Poplar to the Grave, Summon the Jet Synchron, Poplar Effect in the Grave to put itself in the back row. Snake Ash, Summon out the Oak using the Poplar, and we bring back our Snake Ash. Then we use Snake Ash as well as Jet Synchron to make a Formula Synchron. With Formula Synchron, we draw. Then we use the effect of Oak to summon out a Flamberge from the deck. We go Flamberge effect in the graveyard. They go Ghost Bell on our Flamberge, which is really sad and probably the reason our setup is not that good. We get to bring back the Jet Synchron, go into IP Mascarena. Then we activate the Flamberge effect to bring back the Formula Synchron in the back row, which is going to be summoned as soon as our opponent summons something with our Field Spell. And we have the Imperm. We're playing against Super Heavy Samurai, and they're going to go for a Maxi in response to our Formula Synchron. We get to go into Baron as early as possible, get the Flamberge effect, summon two. We're giving our opponent a lot of draws into Maxi here, but yeah. So we grab ourselves a Birch, bring back the Poplar. Poplar is going to search a spell, and we're going to go for IP Mascarena effect, make a big ass Appaloosa just so we can negate as many monster effects as possible, which I think makes a lot of sense into Maxi. So here they're going to go for their. Um, their effect of Wakaushi, but we're going to negate it, and also we get to negate the Big Bang Case search at the same time. Here, they're going to go for the Wagon. Uh, we're going to use the effect of our Field Spell to summon out the Flamberge from the back row, and then we Omni negate the Wagon. They're going to Pendulum Shokan 3, which is terrifying, and go into Baron de Fleur, and somehow we don't lose. So <laughs> they go for Scarecrow here. We're going to Appaloosa, and obviously they're going to negate our Appaloosa with the Baron here. And they're going to go to battle phase, beat over the Appaloosa. The reason it wasn't destroyed is because it was made with IP Mascarena, by the way. And now they're going to go for Scarecrow, bring back their Soul Piercer, use the Soul Peacemaker to summon out Scales. Scales bring back the Motorbike. Motorbike make itself level 4. They make themselves a Borload Savage Dragon. And they get to search a Stealthy. Then they equip the, yeah, the Link 1 to the Savage. And they summon the Sarutobi. And they decide to pop their own Scale instead of popping the Field Spell on this turn. I don't really understand that play, but... Whatever. Either way, they go for Ethereum King Regulus and a Stealthy. So here, we're looking at Baron, which I think already used her negate. Yeah, she did. And we're looking at a Savage with an Omni negate, a Spell and Trap Pop, which will stop us from using Divine Temple properly. Uh, we're looking at a Omni negate with Ethereum King Regulus and this card, which uh, could have stolen Imperm last turn and didn't for some reason. So how do we beat this? How do we beat this? You know? And here, for some reason, they... Well, I guess they brought back the bell just to just recycle the Baron. But here we go for Flamberge Effect to bait out the Therion King Regulus. And that's fine. Then they get their Soul Piercer Search. That's all good. 
At this point, we're going to summon out the Birch and activate our second field spell. On activation of the second field spell, they're going to go for Saratobi. Saratobi is going to pop the field spell, negating its setup. And now we're going to go for our Sinful Spoils to summon out the Ash. We get the effect of Flamberge and we chain block it with Snake Eye Ash to add Poplar to hand. Special out the Snake Eye Ash as well as Oak from the graveyard. And we get the trigger Poplar special summon it. Add the Jet Synchron to hand with the Oak. And now we get to search another Snake Eye. All five go straight into Lyralusk Assemble Nightingale. And we swing five times directly. Dude, I just... This, I love this. I love this, dude. I love this so much. <laughs> and here's Zeus. This super heavy samurai player must have been punching the air right now. Alright, nice savage. Anyway, Zeus again. <laughs> I just thought there was such a good replay because of that, dude. Dude, five material Zeus. <laughs> nice, bro. Very nice. Okay. And we get to put the Flamberge in the back row. Set Jet Synchron just in case that our opponent can pop off here. They normal summon a Wagon. We're going to go for the Zeus effect on Wagon just so they can't equip anything. They go for a Bestial. Bestial gets sent to the grave, then they get the Bestial effect to send the Zeus to the grave, but we get to summon two from the grave because of Flamberge being sent to the grave, and thus we get to just get back in our grind game, and <laughs> they scoop it up. I think it only makes sense. Yeah, this deck has a crazy, crazy grind game. That was pretty good. That was pretty crazy. Pretty funny. Infernobles, another one of the decks that got some insane support in the latest release. And this list is coming to you from Pokemon Trainer in the Discord. I also have a list from Mazinger, and I'll be showing both real quick here. Um, but yeah, this deck, I mean, obviously it's just a Synchro Spam deck, and you can get into your combos using the Isolde, uh, which you can just make with like a Neo Space Connector. I'm sure there's a bunch of lines for this stuff. I'm going to let the chat kind of tell me a couple of things to talk about because I've never, ever played Infernobles. I've played against them a couple of times. You know, I know the basic stuff with Isolde, like, you know, you can summon Neo Space Connector, Neo Space Connector, Special Aqua Dolphin, Go Aqua Dolphin Effect, and you make Isolde, Isolde, uh, I don't know, send Living Fossil, Living Fossil, summon, I think, the Renault. Like, I know the super basic shit. Oh, Noble Arms Museum. I didn't even read this card. So both of the effects on this card are soft once per turn, which means that kind of like in Gate Guardian, you can just kind of like, if you have more copies of this card, you just get to do this stuff again. So once per turn, pay 1200, add one Noble Arms card from your deck to your hand, except Noble Arms Museum, obviously. And once per turn, if the pre previous effect was applied, you can target one Noble Knight monster card in your spell and trap zone, special summon it. That's what lets you summon multiple Charles Link monsters. Dude, that's actually awesome, dude. Going to the Link, you get your Synchro, and then you can just like... Use your field spell, bring back this dude, go into another link, this guy equips the synchro again, then you can activate another field spell, summon this dude again, and then use him for something else? That's sick. There aren't any waifus in this deck? What are you talking about? You've got Angelica right here, you've got her on the equip spell as well. Isolde? Yeah, dude, you have fucking Isolde! You have two waifus in one, what are you talking about? Also, let me show you the uh, Maz Infernobles list. It's a little bit different running three Reno and not running the Flint Lady. You know, it's just a, a different way to play the deck. It's got some differences also in the, in the sense that it's running the Bamboo Sword stuff. So some people are saying it's a must and some people are saying it's a brick in the chat. So, you know, this is an alternative build for the deck if you, you know, you're not a fan of the first build. And we're going to check out both replays as well. We're going to be starting off with a going second replay from Pokemon Trainer. And then we're going to check out a Maz replay of going first. So we're going to get really both sides of the coin for Infernobles. Uh, sorry if my commentary on the deck list wasn't great. I'm not super familiar with this deck, but I'll try to commentate the replay well. We'll keep it slow here. So we're playing against Phantom Knights going second, and we had Maxi, but they had the cross out. So you can't say that it was won by Maxi. So let's see here. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit real quick. Uh, let me just, uh, let me, yeah, it's nice animation, bro. All right, going into Cherubini. Cherubini is gonna send to the grave a Graph. Oh my God, I haven't seen these cards in a while. And we're gonna Ash the Graph effect. Fair enough, that makes sense. Then they're gonna go for the Boots effect to grab the Phantom Knights uh, Shade Burgundine. Shade Burgundine summons itself to go into Rusty Bardish. Rusty Bardish is going to send to the grave the Phantom Knight's Ancient Cloak and set, what was it, the Fog Blade? Yeah, set the Fog Blade. We get to search the Phantom Knights of Torn Scales. Then we just go for Fusion Destiny. Oh my god, it's DPE Fog Blade. Come on. DPE Fog Blade? In 2024? DPE Fog Blade, dude? Come on, man. Anyway, we're going to go Noble Arms Museum. Not a hard once per turn. And they're going to go for DPE to pop the museum. Now, this would be crazy in any scenario where the field spell is like just once per turn. But anyway, we're going to go for Neo Space Connector. They're going to go for Fog Blade. 
And uh, yeah, at this point, how do we keep playing here? Oh, it's any warrior. I thought it was a fire warrior for Flint Lady. So Flint Lady summons herself from hand. We can go straight into Isolde. At this point, they already used DPE. We're just going to pop off, right? It's going to be easy at this point. We add the red layer by sending five equip spells to the grave. And we can summon out the Ogier. Okay, then we go for Renault. Renault add the Durandal. Durandal effect, well, equip to Renault. Then we can go for the graveyard effect of the Turpin to special summon it. Durandal can pop itself to search a fire warrior from the deck, as uh, Vanquish Soul players might already know. Yeah, he sent four to grave, my bad. He sent four to grave, uh, he just searched the quantum red layer with the first effect of his old. Uh, so anyway, summoning Angelica here. Angelica searched the field spell, is that what it is? Is that what it is? Oh my god. It, yo, that is that what it, that's crazy. If that's what it is, that's crazy. Okay, so we get Oliver here. Oliver, discard the red layer. We activate the field spell yet again. Not a hard ones per turn. Search the Infernoble Arms Joyeuse. And we equip the Joyeuse. Then we can go Joyeuse effect. Add the Gear Freed to our hand and pop the Joyeuse. Then Gear Freed effect. Banish one equip spell from the grave to special summon it. Dude, Gear Freed is so awesome in this deck. I'm glad that this card is actually good for something, you know? Because it's such a cool card. So we summon out a Baron de Fleur. Using those two, we go into our Emperor Charles. All right, let's see this stuff in action. This is the stuff I want to see. We get the effect of uh, Captain Roland. He equips himself to the Emperor Charles. They go for DPE pop effect. Now we go for our Link 1, go into Emperor Charles the Great. Emperor Charles the Great will equip the... Uh, this is Emperor Charles Synchro version, I guess. Fogblade, what, summons something? Is that what it is? I actually forgot what Fogblade does in the Grave. Just, okay, yeah, it's special from Grave. Anyway... Equip this, then we get to go for our field spell, summon out the Emperor Charles. Is this card a hard one for turn? It's not, eh? Dude! For going second, this is pretty impressive. Now let's go see the full combo from Maz, and hopefully watching this combo helped me understand the deck at least enough that I can actually commentate it properly. I, I really need to learn this deck, dude. I really need to learn it. All right, so now we're going to get a going first replay, and hopefully I can commentate this one a little bit better than the first one. For the Infernobles, from Mazinger, the OG literally submitted three decks for this video, so we kind of had to showcase all of them, right? So, ah, oh, Maz, you didn't do it. You didn't keep chaining on for the draw phase for the wanted. It's okay. I'm not going to give you shit about it. I forget all the time. Anyway. So we discard our Neospatian Aqua Dolphin to summon out the Diabell Star. Diabell Star can get us into our Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. Then we can activate Oliver, discarding the Turpin to Special Oliver. It's now level 1 and we get to equip it with the Turpin. Now we're going to go for Sinful Spoil. Send the Turpin that's equipped to the grave. Oh, that's really cool. And we get to sum we summoned out... Um, Sorry, I didn't read the one we summoned out. We summoned out the Recar Detto with the uh, Sinful Spoils. And now we make Isolde. Isolde add Quantum Red Layer. Send four equips to the grave. And we can summon out the Ogier or Ogier. I don't really know how to pronounce that. Then we get the Graveyard Effect of Cursed Bamboo Sword. We get to add Broken Bamboo Sword to our hand. And Ogier is going to send to the grave the Phoenix Gear Freed. We go for the Draw Effect off of the Wanted. And we're going to draw into a Called By. Not bad, not bad. And go into Promethean Princess. Yo, this card is just suddenly good now. When it came out, people were like, this is going to be mid. I thought it was going to be bad. I dismantled it when it came out. This card is like crazy now. Anyway, Promethean, special summon, the Ricardetto. Ricardetto, bring back another one. And then we go into Angelica. Angelica is going to search our field spell. That's crazy that she searches that. Especially since it's not once per turn. Well, not a hard once per turn. Anyway, we use the graveyard effect of Olivier. You can target one warrior you control, equip this card to that monster you control. And we can trigger the Princess of Noble Arms to bring out, to cheat out the Roland? Okay, interesting. Wait, sorry, I need to understand what just happened here. How does she do? I just want to read this card because I, I need to at least read it and understand what's going on here. So if this card is special summoned, you can add the field spell. When a card or effect is activated, that targets this card. Okay, so when the card that was equipped to the... Angelica. Yeah, yeah. So when a card in the graveyard tried to equip to Angelica, she was able to trigger and special the Roland from the extra deck. That's what it is, right? Then you can special summon. Oh, so she just banishes until the end phase. Then you can special summon Roland. So she actually comes back. Oh, that's kind of neat. All right. So now we're just hard summoning Knight Emperor. Sorry, I just really had to understand that. So now at least I know what Angelica does. So we get back our Renault and we trigger the Roland in the grave to equip it to our great Emperor, King Emperor Charles, whatever. Now we summon Emperor Charles the Great. Charlemagne is going to equip Charlemagne. And then we get to go for this effect to pop. Wait, what? Why did you do that? So you could go Baron. Oh, okay. So you were just locked into fire with Promethean. So you popped her just so you'd be able to go Baron with uh, special summoning Charles and then using the Renault. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So you popped her 
either way she's at she's at her best in the grave so it's not really that big a deal and then yeah so you'll get to summon this with the field spell and make back okay that makes sense sorry i'm just trying to understand how this deck works here so you go for the field spell bring out the emperor charles and with him and renault you can make a baron de fleur okay makes a ton of sense now makes a ton of sense then we can go for immortal phoenix gear freed banishing and equip spell and we go for Ogre, equipping itself to our link so that we have a spell in Trap Negate. We have our call by, we get back Angelica. And Angelica, it's only, oh, and then you get at the end phase because you popped, yeah, yeah. So because you popped a monster during the end phase, you can equip one equip spell from your hand or graveyard to this card. So this way you equip the Angelica. So this will negate the first spell that they activate kind of like Magician's right hand, right? Okay, so he needed to already have the Ogre equipped so that you could equip the Angelica. All right. That's really important to know. So yeah, this is really good because um, Angelica says that she will negate the first spell card that resolves. This means this card can negate Super Poly. And you might say like, okay, well, I'll just not use Super Poly first. That's true, except this guy is a spell and trap negate, right? So you can just go like, if, like let's say they try to bait it with, I don't know, uh, Raigeki. Like, you know, you could just like negate Raigeki with this dude. And then if they go super poly, super poly will get negated by Angelica. If they have three spells in hand, you can negate, like if they have two high impact ones before going super poly, you can negate the second one with Baron. Then when they try to go super poly, it'll get negated on resolution by Angelica. Also equipping Magus from our deck is our grind game. So are we going to say mages? I'm going to say mages. I think that sounds the best. And this is your grind game. So I just want to read this one as well. If this card is sent to the grave, shuffle into the deck three of your other fire warrior and or noble arms cards that were banished or in your grave and draw one. Okay, so it's just your recursion basically. Yeah, so this is a monster negate. This is a non negate. This is a spell and trap negate. This will negate the first spell that resolves. So basically the first spell that you don't negate will be negated by Angelica. And then this Angelica on the field, she responds to being targeted, I believe, right? Thank you, Coots, for the 10 gifted. Trying to get some YouTube clout in the deck showcase. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate the love and all the support. Seriously, dude. When a card or effect is activated that targets this card on the field or when this card is targeted for an attack, you get to send a fire and you get to summon the... Is it just the uh, Roland? Yeah, it is just the Roland that you get to summon with it. Okay. She's there for Princess Graveyard Effect. Oh, now I see it. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as they special summon something, you're going to get the Promethean Princess to pop the Angelica. Then Angelica will be targeted. So she gets to tag out for a Roland. And you get to do the Promethean effect of popping. All right. I like it. I like it. All right. Let's keep going here. Let's just see how it plays out. Surely our opponent can't beat this. They start with the Imperm on Baron. So we're going to negate the Imperm using the Emperor Charles. Then they have Droplet. But Droplet on resolution will be negated by Angelica. It will be negated by Angelica. Yes. Even if you can't respond, you still negate it. That's awesome. Then they're going to go for chicken game. We're going to go for our Roland engrave, equipping itself to the Emperor Noble, Charles the Great. You know what I mean? You know the one. And do we get to... Oh, we... Oh, because it equips, we get a pop. They go for the Harpy's Feather Duster. All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Not bad. Then we get our... Okay. We get our Magus. Shuffle in back three. We'll get a draw and he'll equip himself again. So that way... Oh my god. Dark hole. So we kept our bat hunt for this, thankfully. Dude, this guy had the nuts. This guy played five staples in a row. What the hell? What the hell? Yeah, let's get some moots in the chat. No, Maron! How do you not lose here? What do you have left to do? Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, shit! That's crazy, dude. Dude, this guy had everything. Dude, the princess, bro. Yo, Promethean. Man, good card. Good card, honestly. All right, next up, let's do High Niner or Hyper in the Discord. I really don't know how you want me to pronounce that. Please tell me. We're going to go for Hyper today instead of High Niner, even though I've been saying High Niner forever. Uh, and yeah, this is Heroes. Heroes finally got their beloved hero flame wingman infernal rage so this guy will search the favorite contact which specials a fusion monster from your extra deck that mentions a hero monster as material ignoring its summoning conditions by placing the materials listed on it on the bottom of the deck in any order from among cards in your hand field graveyard and banish damn it's not a bad trap at all for hero with the trap that you're searching you're cheating out this guy he gains 300 attack for each monster in your grave 
also cannot be destroyed by card effects. If this card is special summoned, you can destroy cards your opponent controls up to the number of different attributes among the monsters on the field. So yeah, if this card destroys a monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack, just like Flaming Wingman, or Flame Wingman I mean. So you do get the spirit of Wingman chilling in this deck. That's pretty sick. That bonus effect of not being able to be returned to deck counters bounce effects too. It's very funny. That's true. You can tribute this card that was fusion summoned using a normal monster, which is like probably Neos because that's your only normal monster. Uh, and special summon a level 7 or lower elemental hero monster from your extra deck. So you get to bring out the sunrise after you search this trap. So it just adds a little play to your thing really. Getting this trap and then being able to cheat out the shining Neos. I don't know how much better that makes a deck. But it is pretty badass. I'm not going to lie. Let's check it out. Let's see. Let's see the new heroes in action. Is going to be toxic? Yeah, that's heroes in a nutshell, man. People think they're based. And then whenever you face them, it's actually... Oh, this is not based. This is gross. I hate this. And never mind. I hate it. Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> Alright, so we have the Stratos here. We're gonna go for Stratos. Stratos search the Ferris. Nothing new. We're gonna go for reinforcement of the army, grabbing the Destiny Hero Denier. Now we're gonna go for Vision Hero Ferris, discarding the Denier to special summon it. Then Ferris is gonna put our Vision Hero increase in the back row, increase and vision to the grave, and then we get to summon Vion from the deck. Vion sent to the grave a malicious. Using these two, we go into a cross crusader. Man, I hate heroes. Royal Cross Crusader is kind of nice though. So summon back our Malicious with the effect of Cross Crusader. Then we can send it to the grave to get our Liquid Soldier. We can trigger the Malicious and Grave to summon another Malicious from the deck. Then we can link into Infernal Divisor. Infernal Divisor is going to reveal a monster from our extra deck so that we can search a monster listed on it. That way we can search our Royal Neos. Very clean, not going to lie. And summon out the extra hero Wonder Driver. Then we get our Denier. Denier is going to stack the Destiny Angel actually. Okay. So polymerization with these two goes straight into the elemental hero flame wingman infernal rage then we get to trigger wonder driver get back our polymerization and we get to trigger the uh, flame wingman effect to get our trap as well as the draw effect of liquid soldier so liquid soldier draw two discard shadow mist to lucky and we get to grab our favorite contact then we're going to go for the uh, wonder driver to set polymerization after that, we can tribute our Infernal Rage to summon the Sunrise. Sunrise is going to fetch a Miracle Fusion. We get to go Polymerization. Use these two over here, and we can go into our DPE. Very nice, very nice. After that, we're going to go for Miracle Fusion. Miracle Fusion, Shuffle... Uh, no, Banish. Sorry, my bad. Uh, banish two from the grave to summon Wake Up, your Elemental Hero. I don't even know what this card does. Wait. If this Fusion Summon card is destroyed, Special Summon one Warrior from your hand or deck. That's the important part. DPE, pop both of these, and we get the effect of both DPE in the grave as well as Wake Up Your Elemental Hero. Wake Up Your Elemental Hero after it's popped will Special Summon any Warrior from the deck, and we're going to summon out the Shadow Mist to grab a Mask Change. We're going to set the Mask Change, set the Favorite Contact, then we get to discard our fucking Dark Angel to put it on our opponent's field so our opponent can't use any spells. Then we get to go Mask Change, to go into Dark Law, and I guess, okay, we get the Shadow Mist effect. They go for Astral Shadow Mist. That's whatever. You just can't use spells, and all your cards get banished. What if this guy's playing, like, cash? Oh, you get DPE, too. And you get the Wonder Driver to get back your Miracle Fusion. And you get kaiju Wait. Wait, they Kaiju the DPE? Oh, my God. This guy's playing Gold Pride, and he chooses to Kaiju the DPE. That's tough. I would have probably kaiju the Dark Life I was there. But anyway, here we get to do the effect of our Shining Neos with our Trap card and pop two cards. They're going to try to crash their Dark Angel. We're going to boost their Dark Angel with our Shining Neos, with our Honest Neos. I mean, that's hilarious, dude. Boost their Dark Angel is crazy, bro. That's fucking funny. All right. All right. That was pretty good. Pretty good. So here we have... Maz's TG list and TG Maz has been telling me this deck is going to be a lot better in Master Duel. So I'm looking forward to see if that's true. From what he's been telling me, he thinks it's a really, it's like a high rogue deck, which I mean, I could see definitely, especially since we have the wanted stuff and Salamander from what he's telling me is basically like your goat. It's your dude. This is your guy. And I have it in Royal. So I'm probably going to have to build this deck at some point because, you know, Salamander and Royal, like, you know, that kind of means you got to try it out. You can tribute one TG monster, special summon one TG from your deck with a different original name that attributed monsters. If you control a machine TG, you can target a level four or lower TG monster in your grave, special summon it in defense position, but negate its effects. So 
Really, really good card. And not quite a circular, but still really insane, especially since you can just summon it by having wanted, you know, and you can just go into your sinful spoils to get it out. That makes it really crazy and super consistent. And he says the goal, you want to get into your TG Mighty Striker. Once It's a uh, level 2 synchro. Once per turn during your opponent's main phase, you can quick effect immediately after this effect resolves. Synchro summon using this card as per every TG pretty much. You can only use this effect uh, once per turn. If this card is synchro summon, you can add one TG spell slash trap from deck to hand. If this card is sent from your monster zone to the grave, you can send one TG card from deck to grave. Ooh, that's really good. So you get a search and a dump with this guy. That's crazy. Ashes one card combo too. Oh yeah, Snake Eye Ashes one card combo too because you'll get the Poplar and with Poplar you're going to go get the Sinful Spoils and then Sinful Spoils you're going to go summon out your Salamander and get popping off. Now I'm not going to pretend I know all the combo lines about this deck because I don't know anything about TG. I'm sure you don't either. There's only one person that knows anything about TG and it's Maz in my chat right now. What is that? Two UR? I'm missing two URs. I might build this. Yeah, a lot of one card combos in this deck. So let's go see it in action. I'm more interested in TG than Infernobles personally. I'm not going to lie to you. Let's see this replay in action here for TG. So it looks like a regular Snake Ash hand for now. Hey, you should be activating that in the draw phase, Moz. What are you doing? Anyway, we, can, we get our Diabell Star, discard the Snake Ash, and summon out the Diabell Star. Then we go for Diabell Star to set our Sinful Spoils. My guess is you wanted to hold your normal summon if you could afford to. So here we summon out the Snake Eye Ash, and Snake Ash is going to add Salamander to hand. Wait, okay. Just a normal the Salamander. Then we go Tribute Salamander, summon the TG Tank Grub to go right into TG Mighty Striker. Mighty Striker, and then we get the effect of Tank Grub. If it's used as a material, you can special summon one token. Uh, level 1, 0 attack, 0 defense. Okay, makes sense. Then Striker is going to add the TG all clear. We're using these two. We're going to go straight into Sprite Elf. And we get the Graveyard effect of Mighty Striker to send to the grave the TG close. Then we can go Elf, bring back the Striker. And yeah, Moz was telling me Elf is a big reason why he thinks that TG is going to be a lot better in this game than it was in TCG. And I think this interaction with Striker makes it pretty obvious why. Now I'm just going to read the TG all clear real quick. So all TG monsters on the field become machine, which is going to make using the other effect of Salamander a lot easier. Also, during your main phase, you can normal summon one TG in addition to your normal summon slash set. During your main phase, you can destroy one TG monster in your hand or field, and if you do, add one TG monster with a different name from your deck or grave to your hand. This is a crazy card. This is a field spell. This is a straight up field spell. All clear, I guess. Uh, we get to destroy a TG monster to add one from our deck to our hand. Then we get the all clear second normal summon. Normal the TG Screw Serpent. Screw Serpent plus the uh, the Salamander. We go into TG over Dragonar. Uh, I'm just going to... Uh, uh, let's read Dragon Art real quick. Is this any number of TG monsters from your grave in defense? Oh, but you're locked into TG monsters for the rest of the turn. Okay. Oh, but wait, it doesn't matter for this deck. It doesn't matter. Because they can just synchro on opponent's turn. So that's what it is, right? You're going to be using them and you could just like synchro on opponent's turn. Yeah, we quick synchro on opponent's turn. Untargetable. That's so cool, dude. Damn, so you lock yourself into TG. Then on your opponent's turn, you summon Crimson and a level 12 and just do a bunch of goofy shit. Axel Synchro. Okay, let's go, baby. All right, let's see. So we make TG Hyper Librarian here. Then we go for Salamander Effect. Since all our TG monsters are machine, we can bring back a monster from the grave to go into TG Star Guardian. Then we go for Hyper Librarian since we get Synchro Summon to get a draw. And we get the Star Guardian to special summon from our grave, the Screw Serpent, right? Oh, it adds it to hand. Oh, my bad. My bad. Then, oh, okay. Drawn to Gamma is not that amazing. Using these three, we go into Glaive Blaster, dude. And we go for one for one, one for one, discarding the Gamma, makes sense. Summon the Drillfish. Then we can go for Star Guardian, special summon one TG. Okay, so it doesn't matter because these special summons from your hand after. So it's almost the same as a Monster Reborn, but a little bit better. Make another Dragonar. Then we get the effect of Wanted to get a draw. Draw another Gamma, that's really depressing. Uh, either way, we get to go Glaive Blaster. What the, f wait, what was that? What was that play? If a Synchro Monster is banished while this card is in your grave, you can set this card. This is a non negate Trap, so. Makes sense. And once per turn, if a monster is banished face up, you can target one of them special summon it. Okay, so you don't you don't lose anything for doing this. Basically, you're just doing that to proc the trap in grave and you get back your monster anyway, so it doesn't matter, right? That's pretty good. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so our opponent is playing Snake Eye. Sorry, I was hearing a weird sound. 
And we go straight into Baron on opponent's turn using the quick synchro effect. They're going to go for... Oh, because you summoned, they were going to try to summon the Flambert, so you just negate. Okay, okay, makes sense. So at this point, you get to go Sprite Elf. Bring back... Oh, bring back Striker, Striker, Synchro into Calamity. I mean, Crimson. And then you get Striker, Dump. You get Crimson Dragon effect. Okay, you're going for Blazer. Fair enough. Triple Tactics Talent. Negate the... Okay, ta negate the talent. I mean... It's getting a little scary. We're out. We're out of inter. Oh, it's banished, so it comes back. Do you get to do it again if it's back? You do. Oh! And we have the Omni in the back row too. Oh! <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, this deck is sick. Okay, this is awesome. That's clean as hell. I'm not gonna lie. Oh my god. This is sick! Dude, I'm gonna have to build that. That looks so fucking cool, dude. Delta, Axel Synchro! Shout out, Moz. That was crazy. All right, I'd, at first I wasn't gonna include it, but from Bidoof here, we have the ABC Revolution. So you can use Revolution Synchron with like pretty much any level four in your deck, which is all the ABCs, to be able to go into Ancient Fairy Dragon. And with that, well, obviously you can search Union Hanger, which will get your place going. I don't think there's really much more to say about that than this. I mean, I don't think this is this card is just going to randomly make ABC a meta threat. But ABC is based, and this is a good excuse to show some ABC gameplay. So we are going to check out an ABC replay. Shout out Bidoof. Okay, so with Bidoof, we have Revolution ABC. Kind of looking forward to seeing this one. Kind of want to see the ABCs in action. It's been a long time. I can't remember the last time I saw ABC in action. Um, but okay. So we got Sea Crush Wyvern, B Buster Drake, we got the Regulus tuning and unauthorized reactivation. This hand is clean, I can't lie, and foolish. Okay, you just got all the nuts. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna send the Enchantress of the Temple to the grave. We get the Water Enchantress effect, banish herself to get the Rite of Aramisir. You don't need your normal summon effect in this deck, really. So Rite of Aramisir here to get the token, and then we get the Fateful Adventure, normal summon Sea Crush Wyvern to search the Draco back. Then we can use this effect, discard the Draco back. Draco back in the grave is gonna equip to the token. Then we can trigger the Griffin Rider, and we can activate tuning, add to hand the Revolution Synchron, and we get to mill. Oh, we mill the Sea Crush Wyvern. Well, that's not too bad of a mill, honestly. Then we could go for Unauthorized Reactivation to equip our Sea Crush Wyvern with the Union Driver. Union Driver banish itself to equip a Assault Core, a Assault Core Summon. Then we get to go Revolution Synchron using both the Sea Crush Wyvern and the Revolution Synchron to make a Ancient Fairy Dragon. But we don't have a field spell. We get Sea Crush Wyvern to summon from our hand the B Buster Drake. Then using B Buster Drake as well as a Assault Core, we make ourselves an IP Mascarena. Okay, so far really good. B Buster Drake effect, a, uh, a Assault Core effect as well. So I think uh, this one adds from Grave to Hand and then the B Buster Drake adds from uh, Deck to Hand. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. So you add these two. Then you get the Ancient Fairy Dragon effect of Special Summoning a level four lower from your hand. You can use a Graveyard effect of Revolution in order to go into your Crystal Wing. That's really good. So you have a non Negate, you have a Monster Negate, you have IP here. You get your uh, ABC on the field as well. Pretty crazy, I'm not gonna lie. And you get the Omni from Regulus. Okay, but you drew the nuts. You drew the best hand ever, bro. Like, that hand was stupid. But yeah, this board is crazy, obviously. This board beats everything. Like, this is FTK. This is Exodia hand. Bro, your your opponent normal summoned Sonic Bird. What the... What, what was he supposed to do? This is scummy. <laughs> bro, normal summoned Sonic Bird, bro. What the fuck was he supposed to do? That's messed up, man. But yeah, I mean, that's about as good as you can make Revolution Synchro look. So shout out Bidoof for that. That was pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. The hand was meh. Bro, come on, man. That was crazy. Stop. Just stop. Don't, don't tell me that hand was meh, bro. Come on now. Finally, our last list and another list from Mazinger. I tried to spread them out, you know, split them with the other decks. But yeah, Maz provided a bit too many <laughs> lists for this video. Not going to complain. This one a lot of people are hyped for is the Rescue Ace mixed with the Snake Eyes. Um, your, your list could definitely look something like this. I actually think that the Rescue Ace version of this deck, like the Snake Eyes Rescue Ace, is not as good as pure Rescue Ace for this current format. I still think this is like at least Rogue. The added consistency to get into your Hydrant is really cool. And this deck is so good at playing into Maxi and Droll. Into Droll, it depends on like when they activate it. But for Maxi, 
I mean, like, oftentimes, if they max it, you can just go and, like, you know, summon your Hydrant, get into your Turbulence as soon as possible, set four cards, and just pass. So having that play into maxi is really, really nice. And then if not, then you can do a bunch of combos with the Snake Eye stuff and just kind of spam, you know? So it's honestly really, really good. Uh, like, my build, if I went for this list, might be a little bit different. I don't think this build is bad by any means, by the way. <laughs> I was kind of talking shit, but I still think this is a really good build. I think, like, with Snake Eyes especially right now, it's not really solved the ratios for Master Duel. At least, I don't even know if it will be solved anytime soon. Let's just go check out the replay and finally finish this damn showcase. Like you said, Moz, like, this deck is definitely going to get a lot better and probably going to end up being even better than pure Snake Eyes once we do get the Rescue Ace support. But for now, I think Pure Snake Eyes is a little bit better. This is still a super valid way to play it, though. So here we have a Prosperity, one for one, a Turbulence, and a Snake Eyes Ash. So we're banishing six to look at the top six cards of our deck. Super ballsy, but I like it. And uh, let's see what we add here. Revealing, there was a lot of good adds in there. Just grabbing Cross out, pretty respectable, honestly, because we have the Ash. So, you know, Snake Eye, Ash, Search Poplar, Poplar Special. Poplar is going to search the Sinful Spoils. Then we summon out the Linker Rebo. We can trigger Poplar, put it in the back row. We can go for Snake Eye Ash to summon out the Flamberge. Flamberge, take the Poplar, put it back in the back row. Then we go for Sinful Spoil, send the Poplar to the grave, go for the Rescue Ace Hydrant. Hydrant, search the Fire Attacker. Then we go for Barricade Borg Blocker. Ah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, Barricade Borg Blocker is essential. You're right. Yeah, you're right. All right, perfect. So here we get Barricade Borg Blocker discard, and we get to use the effect of Flamberge to special summon two level one fire monsters from our grave. Then we go for Bestower of Flames. Bestower of Flames brings back the Turbulence, I'm guessing here. Yeah, okay. That's really clean, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then we get our Rescue Ace Fire Attacker as well. We can set a bunch of cards from our deck with the Turbulence here. Four cards right from the deck. Absolutely love it. And yeah, I mean, we're set up. We have Hydrant. We have this dude. Oh, we also have an ability to... Okay, so you're going to go for one for one. Are you going to just... Oh, you didn't summon it under Sunlight Wolf. Interesting. You go so Baron. Then Link Karibo. Tribute the Ash. Get Link Karibo. Oh, under the Sunlight Wolf. Add back the Ash. Okay, that makes sense. Then with these two... Heat Soul. All right. Heat Soul... Then you go alert, add another Turbulence. Are you going to summon Turbulence this way after? Oh my god. Is Heat Soul really worth it, man? Was Heat Soul really worth it? I don't know. I don't know, dude. Maybe. Shit, maybe. Oh! Okay. I stand corrected. When you put Pit Knight early under Heat Soul, suddenly... Heat Soul looks really good. There you would search Preventer if it was in the game. Yeah, yeah. So, one, again, once we get the support, that shit is going to be crazy. But now I kind of understand the Heat Soul. And plus you have all the back row here. I'm guessing you're going to go Rescue on opponent's turn, grab Hydrant to just get the max potential out of these. You have the Ash, the Cross. I mean, this is still insane. And the Draw as well. Yeah, this is really good. So here we go. We get a Heat Soul. Oh, wait, but you're going for the Draw that early? Huh? Huh? Okay. And Dark Hole. Epic. What the hell? This guy, this guy, this guy had everything. What the hell? Lava Golem, then Dark Hole, then one for one. We're gonna Ash. What goes one for one after fucking Lava Golem and Dark Hole? What kind of deck is this? Was he playing Snake Eye? What the. What? Is it Numeron? Numeron, maybe? I'm so confused by what the fuck your opponent was playing. Anyway, I think that was a decent showcase, but it, it also is like a pretty good showcase of why right now, probably better off just playing pure Snake Eyes. And uh, when we do get the support for Rescue Ace, it's definitely going to be a lot better. There are advantages to playing the Rescue Ace stuff. I think one of the main advantages of playing the Rescue Ace stuff right now with the Snake Eyes is being able to play really well into the Max C and even into droll sometimes but yeah that's gonna be it for the showcase though and uh thanks everyone in the discord again that did participate man this is gonna be a long time to fucking edit it's gonna take a while 